All right, folks, this is Steve, and this is basically the inaugural episode um, of my podcast for Sports Music and Cars here on YouTube, and I'll probably put it some other places as well. And following that, uh, Sports Music Cars, which is what I've been posting on my YouTube channel. If you guys watch it, you know that you know it's about sports, it's about music, it's about cars, right? I like to do all those three things, things that I do, things my friends do, my kids do, so why not post about it and um, put some videos up there showing people how to do some things and what we're all capable of. So I guess what we're first going to talk about is the sports aspect of it all, and obviously the news in sports is Bronny James, LeBron James' 18-year-old son, went ahead and he apparently had a cardiac arrest incident when he was playing uh, um, playing some base basketball over there, I think it was the USC Ghost or something like that, and um, so basically... A lot of people are saying, oh, it could have been COVID, it could have been the shot, and all these things. Um, and maybe not so fast, guys. Maybe not so fast. Um, you know, if any of you remember Hank Gathers, right? Reggie Lewis, you know, Len Bias, you know, Wes Leonard. These were all people who played basketball and died of heart anomalies uh, way before COVID. It was even, even on the radar or anything like that, right? So, um, you know, I've been involved in sports all my life, and, you know, I've had a couple ultrasounds for some surgeries. And they said, yeah, my heart was doing okay. But I don't know that anything can happen, right? You know, anybody can have some kind of anomaly that wasn't necessarily picked up on a scan prior to that. You know, you can have heart arrhythmia. You can have a, a valve being enlarged. Valve can get stuck. Um, you know, you can have an enlarged heart, which is what happened to Wes Leonard. Hank Gathers had an arrhythmia problem, and he didn't stop taking. He lowered the dose of his medicine because he, he thought it was inhibiting his performance. And then, of course, he died. So, you know let's let's all take it with a grain of salt and not get too caught up in the um in the conspiracy theories and just have some uh you know have some mercy on his family because obviously it's a tough time going through and you know his basketball career may be over but you know if even if it is he'll still survive right his, his father's worth the hundreds of millions of dollars and he can do whatever he wants with his life so uh you know god bless and um you know let's see if they make the best of that situation and moving on to the music scene we have Sinead O'Connor has apparently died at age 56. Not apparently died, she has died at age 56. Possibly that she may have died of suicide. We know that uh, she did send out some kind of a cryptic tweet uh, a little bit ago, a few days ago. And so it is very possible that she may have taken her own life. And she also may have been, um, she was very distraught over her son, Shane O'Connor, who died uh, by suicide at 17 years old back in 2022 of January. So even though Sinead had, did have, have three other children, um, apparently she felt a really strong connection and she was saying things about how she hated herself and she hated her life without her son so that is something that we all need to be considerate of and you know regardless of how you feel about her stance and how she was I know she did go ahead on Saturday Night Live and it was basically nine years before Pope John Paul went ahead and actually fessed up to the uh, sexual abuse scandal within the Catholic Church and she ripped up his picture right there on TV, and that was kind of like the biggest shocking thing that anybody had seen. And she may have taken it a little bit too far, um, but I think the point was made. And I guess, like I said, nine years later, you know, there was a revelation that all these things were happening. And I know people who have been involved in the Catholic Church, and I know people who have been abused. So, yes, it does happen, and she did speak to it. And sometimes people don't like to hear the truth. And, um, you know, maybe you can be a little rougher about speaking the truth. Maybe she could have been a little, a little more uh, tactful. Um, but regardless, you know, whether you loved her or hated her, I didn't really have any feelings towards her. I played music and stuff like that, but, you know, whatever. Her music wasn't really really for me, so I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to it, but she was in music. And, of course, Mick Jagger, 80 years old, right? He got the moves like Jagger, of course, you know. Um, 80 years old, the iconic front man from the Rolling Stones has gone ahead and um, had a, what has he had, about a 60-year music career at this point. And uh, Rolling Stones, I mean, outside of the Beatles, you know, they're pretty much the top, I mean, pretty much everybody will tell you the top two bands, famous, most famous bands of all time would probably have to be the Beatles, then followed by the Rolling Stones, and then there's a whole bunch of other bands that can come in and after that, Led Zeppelin and such, maybe Earl Smith, whatever, but uh, it's pretty much, you know, the Beatles and the Rolling Stones are pretty much the top two, pretty much from everybody's list, so uh, congrats to, uh, to Mr. Jagger on your 80th birthday, and the other last thing I talk about in cars, obviously got sports music cars, right, so we did the sports and music, now in the cars part, um, it looks like uh, Tesla's prices are going down. Tesla's not charging quite the premium that they were back in the day, and that seems having a little bit of a ripple effect on the rest of the EV market. And I do have someone, I know someone, a friend of mine from the gym who goes ahead and he is a salesperson over at Tesla in Schaumburg. 
and he has told me that um, yeah Tesla's uh, prices are going down a little bit they're negotiating a little bit more before it was kind of a hey this is the price take it or leave it if you don't like it don't let the door hit you on the way out now they're being a little more aggressive with that or giving a little money for trades and things like that and and prices are coming down on both new and used Tesla's and they're just trying to you know work it into the marketplace and see how things shake out as you know the grid is obviously still nowhere near when, where it uh, needs to be for electric cars I also do know someone else who just got a pretty much new construction built and they have that fast charging system put in so apparently you can you can have an electric vehicle that's maybe down to like less than 10 percent which maybe only may only give you you know 60 or 70 miles left before you run out run out of uh, run out of juice and you can plug it in and according to my friend he's like yeah it's almost as fast as um you know it's pumping your gas in your car and he's like literally it's like you know from the time it goes down from 10 percent to 80 percent you know it's like less than less than five minutes which is a good thing because you know we may be taking a trip to um out to out west pretty soon and we don't want to be caught up in any kind of uh, thing you know where the um where the uh the grid isn't existing properly and then all of a sudden we uh you know have 70 miles to go or 50 miles or whatever so i'm not paying attention and i have to find a place to charge up and then boom, there we go. Now we're sitting there for two hours, right? So hopefully that grid problem is going to get getting fixed, and um, you know maybe uh, lowering these prices on these Teslas are going to go ahead and put some more cars out in the market, and then we can get the grid built a little bit be bit up better, and then we can go ahead and get some more of these things. And you know I do live in a, a fairly large metropolitan area, I think the third largest metropolitan in, our, in, in the United States, third or fourth, right? And um, every time we drive into the lake and all that stuff, I tell my kid, I said, man, can you imagine if all these vehicles here were EVs, right? I mean, you just you're sitting in traffic and you're waiting to try to find a parking space to get to where you're going, and the smell and the fumes, it's just it's just too much sometimes. I mean, thousands and thousands of vehicles on idle just sitting there in traffic. And if all these were EVs, man, the air would be so much better, and you would be able to breathe so much better uh, in the city where you're at. So again, um, you know, this is the inaugural session this is an audio episode of the sports music cars podcast and thanks for listening and if you have any comments regarding any of the topics i've touched on today or anything you'd like for me to talk about in the future uh, please leave those um, in the comments thank you and have a good day